weeks, we talked about pains and addressing those pains and really um, focusing on those, cataloging those as being a, a metric to really focus in on the social media. Again, we just talked about a metric on how you can utilize that really to the maximum. Any other messaging app like WhatsApp or anything, you know, like one of those things. And then search for Gateway Business Group. Let me just put in the chat your download signal. I thought, I thought you had it to be added by somebody in the group. Is that accurate or no? Oh, that may be. Uh, Dustin, you're the one I that asked us to join it. What's this, how's that work? I think that's how it worked last time because I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't add anybody to it. Okay. I know that I added Jared on on saturday at church and so that's i know that is true i don't know if you can just search for it and get in somebody needs to try it gotcha. so uh, it looks like looks like brian had added so i think you can request to add somebody via phone number okay. yeah but you sent out a text brian is what it was and so then yeah, they could automatically then, join, but I don't think you can just search for it. Oh, okay. So once you join. No. So like if Randy wants to join, okay. then you have, you have to send her a, a link for her to join or somebody has to manually add her. Okay. Can y'all do that? <laughs> so yeah. how come I, I mean, I have all kinds of friends that have joined signal but do you mean the group yes okay so once you're on then i can add you basically yes. okay we can so, we can just manually do it so step one and step two y'all can do without me which is download the app join signal once that happens i guess i can add you apparently yeah so okay well let's let's we'll let you guys work on that and then we'll what, we'll what are you actually using it for just like a private messaging group for this group instead of like a, a text group it's very similar to text but it's more of encrypted and private how, how, how is it better than just regular text messages uh, you, 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 you guys don't, not, don't, don't trust apple servers it's it's just it's just an alternative <laughs> well, just a, yes, uh, you're correct well, 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 the, the, the question I have is I, I have like too many of these messaging apps. So if, if there is a chance not to install another one, I, I would rather not. Remember. Yes, I understand that. So um... part, of, part of it is, Dennis, is, is then everybody in, the, in our group would need to know everybody's cell phone numbers. And so part of it is you just, for ladies and for guys, we can just okay. go here. So, okay. Yeah, it's... There's, there's a few trade-offs. Anyway, uh, who would like to open in prayer? Dustin would love to open in prayer. Yes. All right. Father God, thank you for um, tonight. Thank you for this group, Father God, that you've given us this opportunity to, to just share your word together and sharpen each other. Father God, I pray that there is a word for someone tonight. They will hear directly from you, Father God. Allow the Holy Spirit to move through us. Um, don't let our minds um, and our feelings get in the way of what you are doing in each one of us and through this group, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, Jordan is going to lead a really neat talk. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, I mean, it's not a talk. You know how we do it around here. We're collaborative, but it, I mean, we'll have a jumping off point. Is all I'm saying. Uh, but it's wisdom in your business, career, and life. And so there are three. There may be more than this, but three of the words that are kind of in that family of wisdom and learning and all that uh, are are ones that we're going to cover tonight. So the way we thought we would do this is we would roundtable. Kind of like, how do you see this, or or or, or what do you believe understanding means? Uh, and we'll kind of get everybody's thoughts on that, and uh, and then also um, 
And Jordan, are you after that? Are you going to give the, the scriptural of that, or do you want to wait till the end? Why don't you? Why don't you yeah, I think we're going to make sense go. that you you should unpack it and B, and then C should be people applying it. I think. Okay. Okay. Are we going to do each one at a time, or are we going to do all three? I think we should do one at a time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. All right. I just we I think we didn't think of that in our prep. So I think that we should have you in the middle, or else how do they apply it if they if you haven't shared them <laughs> shared with them the scriptural part of it. So all right. So we're gonna and you know as you guys know we are focused on business, career, and ministry, but we're totally fine if there's a side, if you're having a personal issue, everything's in scope for what we talk about here. Um, but anyway, the first one, uh, Jordan, you want to kind of tee us up and what's, yeah, so what's the first word there? Yeah, so we're going to talk about understanding and it's it's pronounced tavuna, uh, at least the way that I've, I've been checking it out. And so... We want, to, we want to talk and see what does understanding mean to us right now? And then we're going to let the Bible tell us what, what it believes understanding is. And so each one of us, as I mean, everybody doesn't have to go for each one, but it would be cool yeah. if we did. Um, you know, so Dustin, what does understanding mean to you in, in business or, or in life? Um, man, I, I actually had this the last couple of days uh, about this this whole uh, concept. Um, I believe understanding would be the uh, the ability to to organize um, data. I think is, is what it comes out to, um, because I know. <clears throat> And I'm going on to the kind of going on the other ones, but it, it goes in like steps. Mm. You you acquire facts, you learn to organize it, and then there is the application of those facts. So it goes in steps. And so I believe that understanding would be the second step where you you start to understand what those facts are for you start to organize certain things and so that's that's what i understand that to, to be okay what about you ryan how do you uh see or believe understanding understanding under, so understanding in what aspect it it's however you want to apply it at the moment it doesn't matter so if you were asking for understanding what what would you be asking for um understanding and perspective um and how i see things and maybe a a mindset a change of change of views um uh, and and that comes kind of with an understanding of uh empathy so i think uh, the more empathy that we have for one another uh and for others around us whether that be in business life you know self motivation you know whatever it is then um you're really able to be someone uh, that is of value and create value and in, in life for others so wonderful what about you tim uh randy okay so for me i see it in kind of two different ways um i think when i'm dealing with other people my idea of understanding is trying to gauge where they're coming from. Uh, on a personal level, I see it where I'm putting on my, my God lens. <laughs> so I'm seeing things through the scriptures. So I don't understand in my own self, but in my spirit is where I draw my understanding from. So it, it, to me, it's like, it's like digging the, 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 the jewels out of my spirit through God's eyes for me to really know that, you know, I might have the greatest ideas or the greatest intentions about doing something or what I think is the right way to do something, but I don't have the understanding of God's spirit 
without like you know pressing into him and seeing it through his word and all of that so it also helps me to deal with the first part where when i'm communicating with other people getting that that what i understand to be understanding is the way they are perceiving how i'm communicating to them or the way that they see the world or the way they see the problem or you know what i'm saying so mm go into one side of the lens my side is through god's lens and then the other side is trying to see through the other person's eyes i guess sure all right hey paul uh we're talking about uh understanding knowledge and wisdom and so i know you just joined in but yeah uh, so you don't have to share immediately but what we're doing is we're we're looking at the word understanding um we want to we want to assess how right now how do we see uh, this word and then we're going to look at a scripture and and let the let the word tell us mm -hmm. what understanding is. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on understanding? Um, I'll share more as I <laughs> okay get that's more fine. From me. Um, I think that's that's a good cross section. I mean, I think that's a yeah. good cross section for now. Yeah. Um, and so. Uh, Brian, you just want me to read, you want me to read my notes that I had? Yeah, I want you to um, share a scripture or two, as well as just teaching us what it means. Okay, do you want yeah. to pull the scripture up that I gave you? Um, yes, I can scroll down to that, and potentially. Um, let's see here. Nope, would have been up. This one's, no, so it's probably the first one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Deuteronomy 32. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is, uh, I mean, there's so many because uh, the understanding is used all throughout, but this is a great one to kind of get the point across. It's Deuteronomy 32, 28. Uh, they are a nation of idiots. They don't know enough to come out of the rain. If they had any sense at all, they'd know this. They would see what's coming down the road. How could one soldier chase a thousand enemies off and, and two men run off 2,000? And so the understanding portion comes in the, in the first part of that. And so it's, it's just without the understanding, you can see the, the verbiage that, that the Bible uses. These are people without understanding. Okay. And so uh, a couple of the notes uh, from the, so the root word that tabuna that, that we have up there, that root word means to build. And it's just like, uh, I believe Dustin gave the word of a mindset. Uh, it's a comprehension uh, of what to do, uh, meaning uh, uh, in like all encompassing of discernment. And so there's this, there's this one little quote uh, that I have. It says, in order to build or construct something, so again, build is our root word. In order to build or construct something, one must have the ability to plan or understand the process needed to be able to discern the process of the construction. And so that's where understanding comes in. Yep. So I think Dustin, you did say, it's kind of the, it, in the three-step approach, it's kind of the middle. It's, I gotta gather some things and then from there I need to know what order they go in. And so my analogy that I gave, I gave Brian is if I'm looking for understanding, you know, I, I wanna build a house. So I need to understand how to do it. Well, I need to know that a foundation goes first and then I need to put up the walls and then I need to put a roof on. I need the order. It doesn't mean I'm doing anything. It has nothing to do with the application. It just means the discernment of what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Does that make sense? That's what the Bible's telling us that word understanding is. So is this also the type of understanding that was given to the people who built the tabernacle and all that? Is that Yes. Is that and so, the right word? Okay. Yeah, it's the same word when it said they gave them an understanding of the articles of clothing. So it, again, it's an understanding of what did God actually want on the back? What did he want it to look like? And how did he want it done? It, but again, the understanding doesn't, it de involves 0% doing. That's a totally different step. So the understanding is just the discernment of what actually is being done. It's similar to Noah getting the the plans for the ark mm -hmm. 
Yeah, highly practical. Belt making. I read this week in Isaiah about how God teaches the farmer to sow and you don't, you know, continually thresh this spelled, you know, you don't run it over with a wheel. Like there's all these details about what not to do with certain types of grain and all that kind of stuff. I'm kind of filling in the blanks there, but the, the, the basic principle was that literally God gives understanding about even farming, which is your job. I mean, that's, you know, that's your career or in the case of ship shipbuilding with Noah or in the case of building tabernacle where you have literally, you know, patterns and art and, you know, being able to weave things and paint things and decorate things and having things not fall down on, on worshipers, but stand strong for, you know, maybe, maybe multiple generations. I mean, we know they were in the desert for, for 40 years, you know, no telling how long after that. So having things that are crafted and created are such practical for a career. So whether you're, you know, you're dealing with business process improvement, you're trying to, to squeeze a half a million dollar savings out of a process, you know, God has the ability to give us understanding about that, you know, or whether you're trying to increase uh, call resolution uh, timeframe uh, for inbound, you know, call dis dis dispositions, or you're trying to build a social media based or internet based uh, ministry an innovative type of ministry. And it's like the how topic on any of these things in our lives, the how topic can be filled in by God. And those are a few practical examples. But I mean, the question is, you know, do we, do we engage God like that? You know, and, and the, the answer it will vary, but the, the hope that we can convey through this is that God is relevant to that, whether it's a, a career move, or, you know, decision, or whether it's a, a business process or creating a, creating a market for something. So it's kind of where I, where I land on it. So I think next we're going to get into application. Um, Jordan, why don't you go first, since you gave us such a good word. Um, is there an application that you have used in your life or that you need to use right now or, or you know, good or bad, you know, a struggle or an opportunity, anything, how you, how you could leverage this? Is, you know, I'm trying to roll out an engagement strategy and things like that in work. And so really seeking God to understand the full capacity of some of the things I'm asking God are, God, how would you engage? What does it look like whenever I engage like you? So I'm just asking questions that just drive deeper um, Audio is kind of in and out. Yeah. Your audio is off. Oh, it's still off, or is it better? Now it's back. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. So for me, for me, it's about gaining more perspective, and so I'm asking God perspective-based questions to gain uh, a. a a deeper overview. I'm trying not to use another word that's, that we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> Who wants to go next uh, on how can you apply this type of practical, you know, this understanding concept? How can you apply this in your life as far as getting this from God about a situation or about a problem or an opportunity or whatever? Does somebody have one that, that they have done in the past? or that you're dealing with right now where you could use that support? Yeah, I'll share real quick. Um, so um, <clears throat> what I went through with uh, learning how to uh, day trade, learning how to invest, um, that was uh, definitely a battle for me on trying to learn, uh, understand different strategies. Right. Um, I had to learn uh, what my uh, emotional capacity was. I had to learn, is, is this way uh, easier for me to understand or is it harder? 
Um, and so for me, the, the application was different strategies, right? Understanding uh, the strategies that best fit uh, my temperament or the way that God made me. And so obviously later on, I learned that day trading is obviously not something for me. I'm too emotional. So I learned how to invest in, in certain strategies that, you know, gave me rest at night and I didn't have to worry about it. So I think the main thing was just, uh, just different strategies um, based on, you know, the way God created you and, and obviously the, the way that he wants you to go instead of trying to choose your, your own way. Okay. I think I, I think I pretty much got you there. Cool. Randy, were you going to go next? Um, sure. So what I was thinking of just now was how, you know, sometimes when I'm in prayer asking God to lead me or guide me in the ministry, as far as what do you want to do next? You know, and my prayer is increase my territory of influence. Okay. But while you're praying something like that, it's God doesn't just like, you know, give you everything. He, he stretches you and changes you and, and cut and he gives you that strategy to change. And he, and in doing so your ministry, my ministry has changed. Um, I can remember times of prayer and fasting, asking God, what is the strategy? And um, I think understanding goes hand in hand with the strategy is that you know, I didn't think of it beforehand, but as soon as you call upon the Holy Spirit, he makes it known to you what exactly to do. And you don't even have to strain yourself trying to figure it out. You just talk to God and call upon him and he will just lay it out for you. And it's just amazing to me how, you know, the steps would come and, and it might be just one little step where it's okay, you know, like I started the t-shirt thing and that was a one step. And now it's like trying to grow that or trying to grow a social media platform. It was just do the one thing, get the understanding of here's the first step. And then, you know, as you start pressing in more to God's plan, he gives you more steps. And, um, that's been my experience is that there isn't a giant blueprint, unfortunately, for those of us who are planners. It's just um, one step at a time, but it's, uh, it's been really fruitful to see how the Holy Spirit unfolds things if you just ask. Love it. So I have two stories, um, and to be pretty quick, but uh, my wife's name is Jamie. A few years ago, she was a software engineer that was rolling out a new type of software for financial organizations that do that does credit scoring. And she was flown to Chicago to meet with a company called Heller Financial, and they were supposed to be doing a rollout of the software. Um, this the software really wasn't ready, but she was forced to go, and so she's on site and it's not working and she doesn't know what to do and she hasn't really been taught properly either. Uh, but also there are problems. There's actually fundamental problems in the software. Um, so I'm fasting to your point a second ago, I'm fasting, I think just a day, but praying and fasting and just praying my head off for her. And then her mom and dad were praying their heads off and she was praying. And she said it was like suddenly ideas just downloaded into her that she shouldn't have known, she didn't know, and that worked. And the software ended up being successful. And I think what, what ended up being a three-day engagement. Um, and so you talk about understanding, you talk about that practical ability for God to just download an ability and knowledge and all those things. Um, I've physically seen that in my life. And I will, I mean, it, that's been, Honestly, that's probably been about 18 years, and I remember it very, very vividly. So I'm, I'm hoping I have certain memories. I hope I just never forget. I hope I just, I hope that's like, like a candle 
in my relationship with God that just never goes out. And I hope I can always tell people this story because it, it, um, <clears throat> obviously it affects me. Anyway, it means a lot that I called on God for a practical business thing like that. And he came through. Um, I mean, how do you make software work that isn't ready? How, how does that even work? It doesn't work. Um, but God can do it. Second one, um, Gosh, I got so passionate about that. Oh, yeah. This is a little one from today. So we're working with a, a, a software company in Houston in the oil and gas space. And uh, we have a very large deal. It's the largest deal that I have across my sales teams. And it's been delayed for a couple of weeks because of long story. And so we're so there's three levels in, in the business. There is kind of like a manager sort of level. And then there's kind of like a director or a VP kind of thing. Maybe it's a VP. I'm really not sure. And then there's a CTO that, that we're, we haven't had any dealings with a CTO, but we know his name. Um, this mid-level person and the lower level have been quiet for about two weeks. Like not, not totally quiet, but pretty quiet. But we didn't know what's going on. So I had the idea of having our CEO reach out to their CTO and not not push them, but just offer, you know, just to get their attention and to show them a little bit of love, say, hey, I'm here. And, you know, here's my name. I'm the CEO. I'm, we're here. It sounds like your team's looking at this with our team. I'm here to help you anytime. And it was that gentle, okay? As our CEO is typing that email, that mid-level person, that director of VP level person uh, was responding to my sales rep and said, I sure hope you don't try to go around me because this will be over. Like as, I mean, it's, it's never happened in my career. I've been in sales for over 20 years. Like literally as they're interacting via email, the CEO is typing and sending the email to this guy's boss that this guy just warned me don't do. Like, how could I know that's going to happen? Like no one's, that's impossible. Like there's zero chance that can happen in life, right? There's no way. And that's, it's almost like a terrible orchestration of events. Like, like it's a, it's a reverse miracle. It's like literally a reverse miracle. Like that's improbable. And what happened was, so we're terrified. I'm just got like immediate anxiety, just like head to foot, just like physical reaction. My rep I'm sure is vomiting on the floor. Um, you know, not really, but just, just try to paint a picture because this is the biggest deal that we've got. And we apparently just screwed it up because this guy warned us at the same moment, our CEO is literally doing that. So, um, Anyway, so I just like shut it all down. I sat right over here and I just prayed and I'm like, and I, I can hardly even do that. This is this morning. And I was like, God, what do I do? You got to help me here. Like we did not mean any harm by this. We had no way of knowing we we're about to be warned to not do this as we're doing it. No way, no way of knowing that. Uh, and, and, and I need you to talk to me right now and I need you. And so, and I, when I, I pray, I try to be kind of insistent. Uh, and so I was just there, like, you're going to talk to me right now. Holy Spirit, what's going on? And I heard in my heart in that moment, do not be afraid of sudden disaster. <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> or the, whatever, the calamity. I can't remember the rest of the verse that, that overtakes the wicked. Okay. Do not be afraid of the sudden disaster. This was a sudden disaster. And believe me, it's a disaster. Um, and so I had, with that, I said, okay, I believe you. And I, nothing changed. But I had that word and a little bit of peace. And, um, you know, we updated our CEO that, you know, that this had been said and it freaked him out for a few minutes too. Uh, but my sales rep picked up the phone and called that middle guy, said, listen, I need you to know, as you're typing that, we sent a, our CEO sent a friendly message. It wasn't pushing it. It was just a check-in. It was to offer a, just a relationship thing. Uh, and he got on the phone and he smoothed it out. We ended up getting a good update. That CTO guy who no one can get a hold of immediately had forwarded that. So it's good that we headed that off and had that call. Um, and as of right now, the guy's fine and he's trying to get it approved by Thursday. And, and this middle guy can sign it himself. Um, but it's, you talk about needing, in, you know, needing that um, practical intervention of God. Uh, you talked about just now, you know, you just said, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, you just need to ask. And I literally did that in business today. The Lord rescued me and vindicated me. And before I even knew uh, the practical outcome of it, I had the word and the word ended up being, you know, delivered for me and we're okay. So definitely encourage you guys to, you know, there's two, I gave you my wife's example, Heller Financial, and I gave you one disaster for me today. And God, God worked in both of those cases for me.
All right. Well, there's my little transparency. Uh, who else would like to share one? And you don't have to, but it, would somebody else like to share maybe a current need or a story of how you, you got understanding? So not, not necessarily a story, but something how to apply this uh, or how do you apply this is like whenever you are trying to um, you know apply some knowledge or some some something that you 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 believe in uh, you know just just to uh, uh, resonate what Brandy said about the Holy Spirit but also just to build on top of that is that you also feel peace by doing it look that's a good sign that that you're doing the will of God because you feel peace uh, and, and as you're doing it uh, Whatever decision that you 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 you're, you're doing, uh, if you don't feel peace, then most likely is is not the will of God. Awesome. Well, that's good stuff. Well, I'm, I'll give people one last call for this one, and then we're going to move on to, to knowledge. Anybody else want to chime in on this one, or are we going to move on? Cool. All right, and you, you guys can always come back to it. But uh, So, Jordan, why, can, you, can you lead us off there on, on knowledge? Yeah, so we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we, want to, we want a round table. What do you right now think about knowledge, how um what's your perspective on it again it can be personal relational and business whatever and then we're gonna and then we're gonna look at what the bible talks about knowledge again so if you're praying and asking for knowledge or if you're just seeking knowledge over a situation what does that mean to you i mean i'll, I'll take i'll be the guinea pig so Knowledge for me would probably mean things like like I just have like head knowledge or something like I've educated like here's one maybe education like that's maybe how I would think about this knowledge would be equivalent to education like yeah. book knowledge maybe it was sure. an idea yeah. yeah there's not a right or, or there's not a wrong answer it's we just want to look at where we at right now what is our perspective right now when we think of knowledge and then we want to let the bible tell us what it thinks about knowledge i would just say um just a, a collection of facts or the building blocks uh, perhaps of like an idea or a, a business um you know be before you have a project, you have to know what the project is going to consist of, what are the components of that project. And then obviously through the acquisition of those facts or those building blocks, then allows you then to step into the understanding portion where you can put those uh, blocks together and, and, you know, obviously build a, a structure. I think of it like like limited, like humanistic things, you know, and I uh, um, you keep thinking of that scripture where God says in his word that he confounds the wise, he uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And um, it's really kind of entertaining to watch because it doesn't matter how smart we think we are or how smart others think they are because it, when God steps in, <laughs> he shines the light on things and and he has his way no matter what people are doing and to me knowledge is just what we're capable of what i whatever i learned in school or whatever my life experience has like a culmination of those you know and it's limited it, it has like a little you know it has a ceiling and so 
for me, it doesn't, it's like in a little box and it doesn't make any room for God. Good stuff. Who else? Anybody else? So uh, when, when Randy was talking, um, I just had a, like a flash of an idea. So this is, this is great. Um, so when, when Randy was talking about the Holy Spirit and, and like all of a sudden I saw the different, these different levels as being uh, uh, understanding as far as, you know, what God says, right? We have your basic knowledge, which could be understood as like worldly knowledge. And then understanding would be maybe spiritual. And then wisdom would then be godly knowledge, knowledge from God, right? And so I just thought about that. It, that just came to me. I thought that was really awesome. Randy, you keep it going. Thanks. Good collaboration. Anybody else want to dive in on this one or we're going to dive into a verse and some unpacking? What do you guys want to do? Yeah, I'll chime in. Yeah. Um, so for me, knowledge, like even whether it be in business or life, I think it's more of uh, how to unite everyone, like how to bring everyone together. Like you, each one of us here knows a certain way or a certain way to talk to someone that I may not know how to, you know, talk to that one person, but you may know how to unite both me and that other person. So um I think it really factors in the, the knowledge uh, of, um, of understanding and how to unite every single person within your circle, I guess, of life. And I think within that um, brings peace. Good. Jordan, you wanna share? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to scroll down, okay. So let me find knowledge. Here is what we've got. Which part do you want to? I'll just let you drive this. How are you going to drive it, man? Sure. Uh, so, so knowledge. Uh, the, the word in, in, in Hebrew is da'at. Uh, the root word it means door. Uh, it also means back and forth. Uh, specifically, like an eye that's looking over, sifting through something. Um, and so there's some scriptural examples. It says, um, and knowledge in Hebrew, 100% is a relationship word. You can't have knowledge without relationship. And so oftentimes in, in, our, in our day and age, we can say, oh yeah, I, I know that guy. And it's, I know of that guy, or I've seen him one time, you know, or I you know, shook his hand one time. So yeah, I know that guy. And in Hebrew, no, you don't. It's talking about, I have an intimate relationship with this person, with this topic, with this idea. With So if I want knowledge on uh, engagement strategies, I'm getting personally into, um, you know, to know all about it, right? And so this is where our scriptures are going to come in. And so Genesis 4.1, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, again, the knowing there is a very personal, it's intimate. It's, ta it's talking about relationship between a husband and wife. And so again, it's taught, that's the, the depth of, of knowledge um, that we're asking for. And then there's a couple of different examples of God knowing us and, and, and us knowing God. Do you know God? Um, not in the casual sense uh, of awareness as implied in, in obviously our English language, but in a close intimate relationship, as it says in Psalms 9. And those knowing your character will trust in you and will not leave those seeking you, right? Um, and then uh, it, an example of God knowing us in this manner. So will not, uh, will, God, will not God search this for he knows the secrets of the heart, Psalms 44. And then obviously we have the opportunity to know God that way in 1 John. And by this, uh, we may be sure that we know him if we keep his, com uh, keep his commandments. 
And so the knowledge perspective is the sifting through, uh, particularly when we're talking about the book of Proverbs and it's wanting you to gain knowledge or gain understanding. It's a sifting through. I'm going to look through everything and I'm going to know every nook and cranny and I'm going to decide if it's good, if it's bad, if it's wise or unwise or foolish. And so the knowledge is all encompassing. And the door aspect of that is I'm closing the door or opening the door on that knowledge. And so, um, but the biggest takeaway is the relational aspect. And so when we're asking God for knowledge, there, there, it requires a relationship um, aspect uh, to things. So That's so good. Does anybody have kind of a application for that? I'll tell you guys a story. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so the the job that I have, um, the job that I have now, I prayed and I fasted for this job, right? And they, I was submitted at a certain pay salary, right? And so my prayer was very, very specific. It was like. You know, Lord, if this is the job that you have for me, then let them offer me the highest of the range. Okay. And I was submitted somewhere in the middle. So when they came back, I did not negotiate at all. All I did was pray and fasted and I believed God. And he said, lean on me. Do not lean on your own understanding. <laughs> lean on me. And so I did. And I am telling you, these people came and offered me to the penny, the exact thing I prayed for. And not only that, but here's what's cool about how God uses the foolish things of the world is I was sitting on my lunch break with one of the guys I work with, who's a Jewish guy who does not know God. And I got to minister to him because he said something to me about this. And something along the lines of, well, you know, he wanted you to know that you're more valuable. So he wanted to offer you the higher salary. And I said, that is not what happened. I'm going to tell you what happened. And he said, he said, what happened? And I said, this is exactly my father answering my prayer. I prayed for that exact dollar amount. This is not, we don't comprehend this. It may look to you as though it happened in a, you know, a humanistic worldly way, but this is all God. So it was such a powerful um, the testimony, but also to watch how God uses his own ways that we don't know. It would just, he, he told us everything to do. <laughs> it will just do it. You know what I'm saying? It's all in the Bible. We just do it just apply it that was such a cool thing um to experience that's awesome what a practical business and career story too i mean it's like the center of the lane here as far as a perfect application it's interesting that um you know this this word knowledge has the meaning of of intimacy you know with god and how he knows us intimately and we want to know him intimately i don't really have a story for me i do have a hunger for that though i i have a hunger i, I really don't want to do business and career and life without the lord i have a passion to incorporate god in my business and in my career i mean i just told you my example right from this morning so i mean i, I have that that reliance that kind of like the natural reliance and that natural passion. Um, but as far as how does intimacy, my intimate knowledge of God or his intimate knowledge of me, how does that work out in, into knowledge in the workplace? Um, I don't have a story right now for, for me. Uh, it's intriguing. And if, if nobody else has one, that's fine. I'm going to have to have five for every single one. 
we got some some people who are watching on Facebook Live that are chiming in, okay. uh, letting us know that uh, we need to open that door, and that um, so that they're enjoying it as well. So just trying to give a little feedback if they have anything they want to share, but they're cool. 15, 15 seconds or so behind on oh, screen. Okay. Okay. So. Sorry for the delay, folks. But to, Actually, to me, can I, can I say one thing though? Yeah, go. I just said I didn't have one. I think I literally gave you one <laughs> in the very word. Like the fact is like, I don't have to have an answer and I don't have to have a motive or an outcome in business. Um, but just the fact that I, I can just say that I want to have that intimacy with God in my life and in my business and in my family. And I think that's, for me, that is an outcome, just wanting that, you know, and I think if, if anybody on this call doesn't have that yearning in your heart, the, I think the people on Facebook who said, open the door, that's a really powerful word of like, yeah. father, I want to open the door to this amount of intimacy between you and I. And I think that's a beautiful thing, I, you know. And then you get the outcomes of what Randy's talking about. You know what I mean? Mm. But that intimacy and that opening the door, I think is a really good step. Yeah, I think we can all practically understand it. You know, that if, if, I, want, if I want knowledge, you know, of if somebody's frustrated about a situation, Okay, well, I need to get up close and personal to that situation to if it if the situation doesn't involve me and I'm mediating it, maybe I got to look at both sides of the perspective so I can have um, more things going on, you know, so I can have a full view, you know, but the same thing if I'm let's just say I'm going to one person and let's say that person's God and God, I'm seeking your knowledge. I'm not going to seek your knowledge from far away. I need to get up close and personal to you so that I have the best. There's nothing in between, right? So I don't want to have this conversation. If I'm, if I'm having uh, with, with me and Brian, I don't want to have a knowledge. I don't want to seek knowledge from Brian and have Brian sit on the other side of the room. No, I want to get, Hey, Brian, let's, let's sit across from each other and let I'm in, I'm in a close place where I can, receive i can fully grasp what you're telling me so the same thing with god that's been my takeaway with this god i'm seeking your knowledge on this circumstance so i need to posture myself i need to get in that position i need to move close i need to get in tight to where i'm able to receive the knowledge that he wants to give me i was um <clears throat> Before this call, I was I had my wife and my daughter pray for me because um, I was experiencing a lot of pressures from a lot of different uh, avenues. You heard one of them today. Um, you know, I you know probably haven't shaken that one all the way, but there's a variety. There's a little small collection of personal and and other pressures going on right now. And um, so I had my wife and my my daughter pray for me, and, and we just kind of gave these things to God and and. You know, but I mean, I was I'm not gonna lie, I was in tears, you know, more than an hour ago. Uh, and so I can tell you right now that that's the intimacy I want, Jordan, is I want to be able to get up and close, right close to God like that, and just say, hey, let's talk about this. I mean, that's, that's, you know, for me, that's a absolute desire and passion. Yeah, and... and you know, but this, God, I, I want to get up and close and I want to feel the way that Brian feels right now, but I want to talk about this engagement strategy. So I want to bring that intimacy into business. I want to bring that closeness into what I'm doing on a day to day. So I can feel exactly like what Brian's feeling and just overwhelmed, but God wants to talk about business too, you know? So. Actually, one thing inspired me just now when you said, you said, I want to talk about engagement. And I think that's so good because why we don't have to wait until we're crushed. Um, it can be something totally positive. Yeah. I think we should have a date. You guys should <laughs> seriously consider going to the lake. Yeah. Do bring your Bible, but also bring a notebook and a pen. 
and just talk to him about your, your ministry. Talk to him about your business. It doesn't have to be all about, you know, repentance all the time or, or interceding for somebody who's sick. Let's do that too. But I just mean like, I, I think there is the, what Jordan just said about, what about engagement, right? So yes, for sure, if you're crushed, go to the lake, okay? Do that. And I've had those. I've been there, I remember, two times. Maybe there's been more. I go, um, I go every weekend because I get crushed. So, <laughs> but I, I like that on the positive side. So whether it's whether it's we need him because we are just really overwhelmed, or or whether it's an engagement like Jordan was saying, like a growth, an opportunity, or or like Randy was saying to to have literally at the level of having our pay impacted, but getting up close to God like that. I mean, that to me is really inspiring. What would happen if we did that? It'd be awesome. Yeah. We transform the way we do business. I can only think of one, like, I think it's like a super kind of an old, older song. Um, but it's a, uh, is that rain down? Is everyone, anyone, it's a worship song? Yeah. Like rain down all around the world. We're singing rain down. So. Yep. Uh, that's kind of the only thing that I, I like worship song that I can think of um, and even like in in my you know I, I've only been in my current job for the last five months or so and um, and when when we're talking about knowledge and you know asking God for things and um, it's my my last job was like a you know a, a, a regular uh, 6 a.m to 2 p.m security job and I was uh overseeing a couple of sites and but it was I, i'd also get a lot of calls after hours and things like that make sure everyone shows up on time sites okay so it, it takes a toll uh and then through those seasons it's asking god like hey like i don't want to be called when i'm at my daughter's you know recital or end of the year program like i had today so i was like yeah it, I didn't have any calls. It was no stress. If, if I wanted to pick up the phone and do some business and I could, but I had the opportunity and, and, you know, chance just to just be there and uh, be present instead of worrying about other things. So um, through the course of time, like just asking God, like, you know, my heart, you know, where I want to be, you know, what I want to do, you know, who I want to be for my family and things like that. So it was like, yeah, that, knowing him and you know asking those things and him knowing me and uh what what uh, my heart desires um you know it kind of brought me to this so so yeah that's my perspective on knowledge and good job on you know partnering with god to protect your family time and, and trusting him with those details i think it's sad when we don't think to ask God for stuff like that, but yeah. showing up at that recital, I mean, you only have a few, right? You know, so good, good job being there, a, and good job b, just getting God involved in that conversation. Yeah, yeah it's important because, like you said, you only get one, you know, and that may, and that may be your favorite one. <laughs> Can I give one more practical example? Yeah. I was just thinking, and Ryan, you, your story made it pop up in my mind. So, you know, when we bring it back to business and we're talking about knowledge, you know, how are we communicating? You know, so what's the, if I'm looking for knowledge of a customer situation, if I'm wanting feedback, if I'm wanting, you know, to get more uh, well-versed on what's going on, you know, am I, am I texting? Am I emailing? Am I calling? Am I sitting down face to face? You know, and so again, if we're talking about relational, which knowledge again, scripturally means relational, which of these doesn't mean any of them are wrong, but which of these gives me the best opportunity to gain the most knowledge, you know? And so I think if you can take that into business and then we can take that uh, into our day to day, we can take it into our walk with Christ. And what does that look like? You know? 
you know, Brian has shared with us many times that there's plenty of times that, I, you know, in that analogy that I can send a text to God, God, I need you right now, download it, give it to me. And he's faithful, you know, but there's certain times where, okay, God, I need to schedule, like Brian said, let's schedule a time. We're going to sit down and I, I need, I need some knowledge, you know, but I got to get in close. We're going to sit down and have a picnic. So I think the fact that this word exists in the Bible ought to tell you something about your purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? The fact and, that this word even exists and is used throughout the word and that, you know, God knows us this way and, and we can, you know, we have these scriptural examples tells you something about what's possible in your relationship with God and um, his relationship with you. And it, it can be inspiring. Yeah. And it can be a check. It can be a check. And, you know, so I know, again, God challenges me. So um, am I having a text relationship with you, God? Is that, is that oh, what's going good. on? That's good. Okay. So Mine then feels a little tasty. I need, you know, I need to pick up the phone. Yeah. I need to pick up the phone, you know? Yeah. And so that could be, that could be something too. Cause we, That's we good. talked about when we talked about um, uh, uh, worship work and, and service, we did that. We took a little time to be reflective and to ask, and that this may be one where we do that on, you know, cause of how relational it is. Yeah. yeah I think every now and then we all, can use a little bit of a longer time. I, I, you know, I fight for my morning time. I missed a few days in a row recently. And then I've, I've been back for a few days, two or three days again. But even that feels kind of like it's right before work. I feel like I do kind of need that, um, you know, metaphorically going to the lake with him, you know, a couple of hours to really just focus on the knowledge and that intimacy. I think that's, I am pers- I'm feeling that for sure. So maybe that'll help somebody else think about that. All right, so let's move on to the last one because we're cool. yeah, out of time. A little time I mean, yeah. And on, on Facebook, they're, they're reminding us that in-person is definitely the best, so. What does that mean? Of the options I gave, remember text, email, phone call, or in face-to-face? Thank you, guys. They're, they're reminding us that face-to-face Thank is the you. best option. So, all right, so wisdom, let's, Let's get a a perspective of right now. What do you see? Um, What does wisdom mean to you when you're asking for wisdom, when you're seeking wisdom? What is, what is it that you're looking for? Uh, Two words that came up for me was uh, application and why, why am I doing this? It's funny, we're talking about doing a why, uh, I don't know if it'll be a series, but we're talking about doing a why night in the near future. So that's interesting, you brought brought up why. What's my why kind of night? What's your why type thing? Cool. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I'll go next. For me, wisdom, I think has to do, it, maybe it has to do with moral decision making, like what's right and wrong. Um, but I could be wrong. And that, anyway, that's, that's what I'm going to vote for. I see wisdom as a journey that uh, we would, I mean, we will never probably get, be to achieve the ultimate wisdom, but it's a journey that we learn, we have understanding, we gain knowledge every time in order to, to, to have some wisdom, but it's a journey. So it's, it's that, that's, that's what wisdom is to me. Would it be almost like the end of the journey, Paul? <laughs> well, I think he's saying it's a spectrum. Like you, yeah. you, you kind of you keep growing in that. How else do you guys see wisdom? Cool. 
Like I said, we're not uh, five every time. I see wisdom as kind of a um, uh, one word only comes to mind: territory. So, um, like when you're asking God, like God, where do you where do you want me to go? Um, you know, there's a lot of businesses and and you know the business industry or whatever um, sales and people and you know everyone that's it's just a, in the secular. So it's like, well, God, where do you want me to go? Where do you, what territory do you want me to to uh, pray over uh, when I go into this business, when I go into this home, when I go into this, uh, what meeting or, you know, who, whatever it is, how can I uh, take over a territory that the enemy has um, said that was his and how can I go in there and just, you know, walk around seven times so that the walls fall down, you know, so. Um, that's kind of how I see wisdom. Like God, give me the wisdom of on how to overcome this territory, how to how to gain back your land and uh, and give it back to you. Good. That's so good. Yeah, that's that's so good. And because I think of it like prayer too, you know. Um, and and you know, he referenced praying. You know, should I walk around the walls and? And, and God gives us those um, those strategies to do that. But also what I find intriguing is that as God has, he will pour it out or he'll sit back and watch you kind of trip over your own feet if you don't. And it's not like he doesn't want to help us. But it's like, for me, I just, I'm trying to be more sensitive to asking God, you know, moment by moment, and not just day by day, but moment by moment, you know, um, you know, and sometimes we think that it's so silly to ask God for simple things. How do I talk to this person? How do I, you know, and sometimes people don't want to call on God because they think that, I don't know, many, many things you think I'm bothering God. He doesn't have time for me, whatever. But it's like, you know, your toddler hops up on your lap and you don't tell them, you know, I don't have time for you. I'm not going to tell you how to tie your shoe or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I think God sees us the same way in that he wants us to ask him for everything. How do I talk to this person? How can I hold my tongue? You know, I like to talk. How do I not talk? You know what I mean? Just, um, everything how do i get a business transaction how do i make more sales how do i how do i do it in a way that honors you that is with integrity that people will see the glory of god in what i'm doing it's just asking and he just pours it out when you do and it's like if you you don't even realize that's what's happening sometimes is because you know god doesn't come and like bang you on the head or, you know, do the loud clanging, you know, symbols to say, I, I'm here, I'm giving you wisdom now, you know, it just kind of flows through you when you're in pursuit of God through prayer. It's really a beautiful thing. And uh, it's, it's kind of neat how he, how he is just so freely giving to his children when we petition him. Okay, well, I'm going to give this to Jordan. Uh, give us some, or you want me to scroll down? Hang on, hang on. I covered that one, right? So it's this one. There we go. Wisdom. Yep. And so, uh, Dustin, hopefully I give it enough uh, throat when I say it, but uh, the word is hokma. Uh, probably didn't do it justice, but that's, the, that's our word that we're looking for in scripture. Um, now, wisdom, I can't stress this enough, in the Bible is 100% related to action. It's applied. It has nothing to do with, God, I want head knowledge. It is not IQ. It is not 
um, gaining perspective. It is 100%, okay, I'm probably gonna say it four or five times, about application. It's about the commitment to doing, right? And so um, it, it comes from a, the word hokmah gives us a, a version of separating. And so it's one who's able to separate between what is good and bad, uh, again, when we're talking about in Proverbs, and this one word can be translated as either skill, so when we're talking about it in, in a work relationship, um, we'll give you some examples of that in a second, um, or it's wisdom, again, our word wise, when it's applied to a leadership or a counselor or uh, a prophet who's giving a specific word, it's a wise word, uh, but it can also be the same thing. So in Exodus 31, 6, it's, again, this is God speaking, he says, and behold, I myself have appointed with him Oliab, the son of my guy, of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all who are skillful. I have put skill, that's our word, that he may make all that I have uh, command you. Again, he's talking about um, the tabernacle. Uh, so this guy, Oliab, God gave him the wisdom, the skill to do what the task that needed to be done. It has, it's not the knowledge, it's not the understanding, it's the ability to do the work and he's physically doing it. Uh, in, in 1 Kings 7, 14, he was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali and his father was a man of Tyre and a worker in bronze and he was filled with wisdom and understanding. Understanding is our word that we talked about a second ago. He was filled with wisdom, the ability and the skill for doing any work in bronze. So he's doing the actual work, right? It's not the knowledge of what to do and when to tinker and how to tinker, it's the doing. And so he came to King Solomon and performed all his work. So I love how in this example, it, it encapsulated by saying he performed the work, he performed the wisdom. Um, and so let me see, there was one more thing I wanted to share. Um, so, um, in my take, the way that, um, they go together is we need to get knowledge relational so that we can have understanding what to do, when to do it, how to do it, why to do it. So we can apply the wisdom, which is the actual doing. So there, that's why in several scriptures, you'll see all three words, you'll see understanding and knowledge and wisdom all three in the same scripture because it's encapsulating the entire process of God I want wisdom and so again from the perspective that uh, I've received is that you're seeking the knowledge and the understanding to apply and to do and if we're not doing then we're not we're not wise or we're not um, uh, applying it thank you and I think, you know, it's it's beautiful that there's so many ways to come to God for, uh, you know, with the foundation of a relationship, but where he's interested in all areas of our life and he has abilities and treasures and gifts across our lives and in all the different areas. So it's neat that even our relationship with God and his help of us it literally takes multiple words for uh, for all the different ways that God wants to be involved and help us and, uh, and know us. And that's, that's neat. So who would like to go first? Like maybe uh, an area where you could use wisdom right now, uh, wisdom and ability and those kinds of things that we're reading about there, or a story of how God did give you or somebody wisdom. Any angle you want, or just unpacking this, what, you, what your perspectives are a little bit more on, as this ministers to you. Any, anything's on the table. I know for me, and I, I don't want to talk too much, so I'll make it quick. I know for me that it, in doing this kind of deep dive and, and doing some research, it's really changed my perspective on what I'm asking for. And so 
agree or disagree. I know that for me, I may be asking for wisdom, but what I really need to be asking God for is, is understanding or what I really need, what I'm really seeking is knowledge. And so I think it's trans it's transforming how I see the steps that God wants to take us through. And so, you know, my example would be, you know, I would like for my son to do step A, B, and C to get this outcome. Now, if he doesn't do them, I'm still, because I'm a loving dad, I'm still going to give him the outcome. You know, son, if you don't eat your broccoli and then you can have a dessert. Well, if you don't eat your broccoli, I'm probably still going to give you the dessert, but I would like for you to eat your broccoli. You know, and so that's the way I think I'm taking this in is that God's faithful to give us all three of these individually or collectively. But I, the way I'm receiving it is that God would like for me to get to know him and have a personal relationship with him on a deep level so that I can understand what he wants me to do, how he wants to do it, when he wants me to do it in life and in business so that I can be wise and to do exactly what he's asking me to do. That's the way I'm receiving this. Yeah, I totally, totally agree with what, um, what Jordan said. Um, uh, for me personally, um, in, in my prayer time, uh, ever since uh, I started working from home, I've been home for over a year now uh, due to, uh, you know, all this. And uh, recently they had entertained uh, for us to go back to work full time. Mm-hmm. And it really hurt my heart to even think about being away from my kids and just thinking about it now, man, I just get tore up of, um, not, you know, doing things with them in, in the morning and, to be closer to God has allowed me to be closer to my family and to my kids and to reevaluate what um, success truly is in God's eyes. Is it, is it monetary value or is it that, that we're together as a blessed family? And, and is that all, is that all that really matters to him is that, we love each other and, and that we're a reflection of, of God on earth. And I spent so much of my life trying to chase money. And, you know, what do they say? It's like grasping, grasping the wind. You know, you'll, you'll never, you never grab it. You'll never grasp it. You'll spend the rest of your life chasing after it. And ever since I, I truly sought out God and, and his wisdom and just getting relationally close to him, he's blessed us financially, you know, tenfold that I, I've never even been close to. And so just this process, you know, to add on what Jordan said, it's, he truly just wants to be closer to you so you know what his what he is truly about, what his what his heart is. He wants you to have his heart. That's really all all he wants. That's awesome. I mean, it, that's inspiring because if you think about it, with you being a, a natural man and you have that passion for your family uh, and that interaction, you know that you you love to have. Just think about the passion that our father has for us um, and how real that really is, you know, because it would be, and if you've got that much passion, I think we'd probably be pretty blown away by how much passion God has to be with us like that. So I have to let that speak to me and, and, and turn into you know, motivate me into action, you know, not just be inspired by that, which is fine and good, but also like, cool, what can I do with that? You know, how can I give God what he's wanting, which is 
pat, you know, that intimacy with me as well. Cool. Who else would like to bring up a, an idea or a application or unpack something on this one? I'll share. Um, yeah. they, uh, as far as like wisdom and just like what uh, Dustin and Randy were talking about, like they, um, so sometimes it, like we ask like, God, like, give me this deal or give me the success, give me this territory. Like, how, how can I do this in, in for the wisdom? Like how, I, I want this, I want this. And, and, um, and I, a motivational speaker I was to, they, he kind of struck a chord with me and I had to stop like, uh, and I was running on the treadmill and I stopped, I was like, dang. I, and I got choked up and everything. I was like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta stop. I gotta, and, and I mean, I was already out of breath, but <laughs> I was, I had, to, I had to catch my breath even more. And I was like, man, and he said something. It was like, well, I do want that, but you just don't want it as bad as I want it for you. Like, I, I want that for you. Like, I want you to be able to go to have the freedom, have the, have the schedule, have the hours that you want to create and have the, uh, you know, determination of whether or not you want to make more money or take a, take a step back and, and, you know, spend more time with the family or, you know, gear up during a busy season or something like that. Or like, like I, I want that just as bad as you do, but you don't want it as bad as I do. So you, you have to, you have to want it. You have to, and just how I think, um, I think Randy, you said it in, in the first question uh, that per pursue him through prayer. Like I, I'm, and he's, you know, as he's talking to me on the treadmill, son, I like, I'm praying for you. Like every single day, every single second, son, I am, I'm praying for you. Where are you, are you, are you praying for me? And, 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 it, and God's like, I am literally praying for you. Like not, not for that. Everything goes well in your life that everything, you know, you do this and you, that person comes to you with this deal and all the money flows. No, I am praying for just you. Like, I just want your presence, your time, your, you know, face to face. And it's like, but are you praying for me? Like, uh, and all these things, like, and just like scripture says, like, we're open the door, as someone said, Op open the door. Okay, well, God, I'm asking you to open it. Okay, well, do you want me? Like, are you praying for me? So, uh, with wisdom, it, it, that's kind of how I take it. And as far as the knowledge and things like that, it's like, well, I, do you want it as bad as I do? Because I, I'm praying for you. So it kind of gut checked me and it reminded me of that, of that breathtaking, literally time on the treadmill when people are looking at you awkwardly and they're like, uh, this okay for real. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what came to my mind. That's cool. I think it just goes back to the whole all of these three words, you know, is while we're pursuing God, he's giving us the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of his will for our lives. And even if we are all entrepreneurial or business minded or whatever your gifting is that God has, you know, endowed you with, he still wants our lives to reflect his glory, you know, and I love what Dustin said, you know, uh, about spending time with his family. I mean, that speaks volumes to give God glory when people see that. And that is wisdom that comes from God because this world is not like that. This world is all about get everything you can right now on this earth, you know, and, and I just think it's a sweet thing that we can be sensitive to his spirit and, we can still be, you know, God still prospers you. He it's, you know, but that's not the goal. It's just the priority is different and the journey is different. 
but it still has his wisdom and his knowledge and his guidance and, you know, um, his understanding on it. I think it's more sweet. It speaks more volumes, in my opinion. You know, when I see people, for example, at I work for a private investment company, and I remember Dustin's, I remember your story about, you know, wanting that chase that dream of, you know, having the fancy car and the fancy job or the whatever, right? And because I work with some guys that do that. And I, there's one young guy, he's about to get married. And they, I mean, they work until eight o'clock at night. And I was praying for him one day because he's about to get married and he has this lovely wife that God is blessing him to be, wife to be. And the Lord just told me while I was in prayer for this young man, and it was, um, what is the book called? Um, I sent him a, I sent him the link. It's, it's called cheating or it's called cheating, but um, it's not about having an affair. It's about, you know, giving your, your heart to something like work or money or all these other things that is not biblical. And, um, I sent it to him and I'm prefacing. I said, you know, I'm not trying to pry. I just, I've been praying for you and your, your to be wife and God put this on my heart. And I just gave him the link to the book, you know, and um, so I think it's good to hear from you guys, you know, Christian men who also, you know, are listening to God's wisdom. People are watching us and it does matter. Those decisions do matter. People are, they have us under the microscope. You know, you have Christian in your tagline anywhere, you're under the microscope. So I think it's beautiful that we can reflect his character in our decisions like that. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I am going to need to move us into prayer. That's good. A great way to end and very inspirational so thank you so much um what we're going to do is we're going to take some prayer requests for everybody and uh, you don't have to have one but if you do have one then we're going to give you that opportunity um i want to say two two quick things about the prayer which is that whatever we pray for tonight's going to happen so i want you to think about what you need from god and um what you need we God will provide. We're going to ask that God will provide that tonight, and we're going to trust that he will provide that for you in his way. So I'm not going to interpret how he, how he delivers it, but I want to, I want to pray with that level of, of faith, whether it's setting free or direction or wisdom or healing or whatever it may be, but we're going to really pray and believe uh, the Lord uh, with that. So with that said, who has a prayer request? I have something simple. It's just identifying that there are risks in every opportunity. So whatever business, whatever growth strategy, whatever new product line or service, there's risk there. And if we don't identify any risk,